Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created Phaser 3. Previously, we started updating our battle menu to handle player input, and we did this by using the Phaser 3 uh, keyboard plugin. Uh, in this video, we're going to continue working on adding functionality to handle our player input. So we'll be adding a battle cursor and I'll showing how we can move that cursor around to allow the player to navigate our menu. If you missed the previous videos, there will be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as the complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you would like to catch up. So let's get started. So to go ahead and move our attack menu game object around our menu, we need to keep track of which attack is actually currently selected, uh, similar like what we did for our battle menu options. So to do that, we're going to have to add a few variables. Uh, the first is we're going to need to add in our attack menu options for our moves, and we're going to need a variable to track which move is currently selected. So to do this, what we'll do is at the top of our battle menu JS file, we're going to add a new variable. We're going to do const. We'll do attack, move, options. And what we'll do is we're just going to go and copy this part of our code. We'll set it equal to our attack, move, options. And then for our moves, uh, we're going to want to make this very generic because for each of our different monsters, they could have a completely different move set. So instead of having the explicit options like slash growl, what we'll do is we'll just have a generic like move one, move two, move three. And then we we'll render out the text for the attacks that'll be passed into our battle menu. So what we'll do is we're just going to do move one. We're going to copy that and paste that a few times. We're going to change this to move two, move three, move four. And we'll do the same thing for our strings. So we'll have move one, move two, move three, and move four for our values. And then what we'll do is we're going to copy our JS config so we can get our types. And then we'll go ahead and update the references. So we're going to have our attack move options. And then we will have attack move options. And we'll update our type def there. So now that we have that, we need to go ahead and make our variable for tracking this. So what we'll do is we're just going to copy these two lines of code. We'll change our type to attack move options. And so we'll do selected attack menu option. And then what we'll do is in our constructor, we'll go ahead and set that to our first attack move. So we'll do this, select an attack menu option, will be our attack move options, and we will do move one. All right, so then next what we'll need to do is we'll actually need to go ahead and update the position and the selected value based on the input. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into our handle player input, and we're going to call two methods that we've not created yet. So similar to what we did before for our main menu, we'll do update selected move menu option from input, and we'll pass in our input, and then we'll do this move select battle menu cursor. And then what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and create those two methods. So we'll come down to the bottom of our file. We'll have our first one. We'll expect direction as one of our params. Then we'll go ahead and create our other method. And then what we need to do is we just need to go ahead and populate these with the required data. So what we'll do is we'll open our first. Uh, first, we'll go ahead and copy our JS config for our direction. We'll paste that above our new method. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to copy one of our if statements here. We'll come back down to our code. Let's paste it. And then we'll copy our exhaustive guard. And we'll go ahead and paste that below the if statement. Then what we'll do is we're just going to collapse this code. And we'll go ahead and update our values. So instead of our selected battle menu option, we'll do our selected attack menu option. And we'll uh, choose attack one, move one. And so if we're on move one, we press right. What we'll do is we'll move to move two. And we'll go ahead and just change this real quick. And it won't, it'll be move three. And then we'll want to change this. And then we'll change that down here as well. All right, so then what we need to do is we just need to do our other if statements. So we're just going to copy and paste. So if we're on move two, if we go left, we're going to go to move one. And if we go down, we're going to go to move four. 
And then we'll just change this to right. And then what we'll do is we're just gonna copy that block, go ahead and paste it. Now we're on move three. Uh, so if we go right and up, then we will be on move four. If we go up, we'll be on move one. And we just need to change this to left and down. Then finally, just one more if statement, and we're going to change this to move four. And so if we go left, we'll be on move three. And if we go up, we're going to be on move two. And we just need to change this to right. I'm going to save. All right, so then the last thing we need to do is just update our positioning on our game object. We'll come into our move, move, select battle menu cursor method. We'll add in a switch statement. We're going to go ahead and use our select attack menu option. Then we need to add in our cases. So we'll have attack move options, move one. And we're going to do return. And what we'll do is we're just going to copy this and do our other options. So we'll have our four. So then what we'll do is we'll do two, three, and four. And then so then we just need to update our game object's position. So we're going to do our attack. We'll do our attack battle menu cursor image game object. We'll call set position. And then we just need our X and Y values. So then what we'll do is we're just going to copy this. We'll paste it above our returns. And we'll go ahead and save. So we have our formatting. Then we'll go ahead and add in our default. And so we'll go ahead and add in our exhaustive guard for this selected attack menu option. And then all we need to do is provide our X and Y values. Uh, so if it's on move two, uh, we'll be on 4286. And for move three, we'll be on 228 and we'll be on 86. And then we'll be 228 and we'll be on 38. Then we just need to update for move one. So what we're going to do is we're just going to grab our values from when we first position our game object. So we're on 42 and 38. So similar to what we did before is we're just going to make a new variable uh, since we'll reference that in multiple spots. So we're going to do const and we'll do our attack menu cursor position. Is it going to be equal to an object dot freeze? And so we'll have for our X 42 and our Y will be 38. And then what we'll do is just going to reference that uh, in our when we position our game object. So what we'll do is we'll come down to our create monster attack submenu and we'll update our position there to use our X value and our Y value. And then we're going to come down here and use that as well. All right, so since we're referencing 42, let's go ahead and do what we did before. We'll have that be our X. And for our 38, we'll go ahead and use our Y. All right, so now that we have everything connected and we're calling them when we handle player input, what we should be able to do is come over to our scene and we should be able to test our changes. So let's go into our fight menu. Oh, it looks like some of our positioning is off. So what we need to do is, ah, yes. Yeah, so for our move here, uh, actually for move two, what we should have is we should have the same Y position, but a different X position. So what we just need to do is just go ahead and update these real quick. So we'll have 228, we'll have our attack menu cursor position Y, and then for move three, this should have the same X value and a different Y value. For move four, we should have our updated X and our updated Y, so we'll have our 86. All right, so now if we come back to our scene, let's try testing again, and now if we do our arrow keys, it moves in the correct position. 
All right, so now that we have that working properly, we're gonna do one more thing uh, before we wrap up our video. We're just gonna do some refactoring. Uh, so right now our battle menu is getting kind of congested. We have a bunch of different things going on here. We have some constant values for our positioning. Uh, we have our types and our options that are available to us, as well as our UI configuration options. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna break some of the stuff out to its own uh, files. So just that way it's a little bit easier to maintain our code. So what we'll do is in our code base, under the battle UI menu, we're gonna add in two new files. We're gonna do battle menu options.js. And then for our second file, what we'll do is we'll do our battle menu config.js. And what we'll do in these files is for our con config file, this is where we're gonna place in our text styles. So what we'll do is we're gonna copy this object here We'll remove it from our battle menu config. And while we're in here, we're gonna go ahead and update it to align with the format we've been using for our const. So we're gonna do export const and we're gonna do battle UI text style. And we're gonna go ahead and do object.freeze on this. Uh, so then while we're in there, we'll go ahead and add in our JS config. Uh, so we're going to do that. And then for our type, this is going to be a phaser types dot game objects dot text. And this will be our text style. All right. So then what we're going to want to do is we'll come back to our battle menu. We're going to go ahead and copy out our menu options and our attack options here. Then what we'll do is come to battle menu options, we'll go ahead and paste that. And we just need to use export keyword to make those objects available in our other code. And then what we need to do is update our references in our code here. So battle menu options, what we should be able to do is if we just type, we should get our IntelliSense, and then that way we can reference it that way. So we're gonna have our attack move options, and then we just need to import these. So we're gonna add our import, add our import. Now if we come down here, this just needs to be our battle UI textile, and we just need to update those other references. All right, so now if we save, our game should refresh and everything should work um, as it did before. Perfect. All right, so one last thing we actually need to do with our code is we need to update our logic for when we're moving our game object and updating our selected options. Uh, so currently we're calling both of our functions for both our main battle menu and for our attack menu. And when we do that, we're actually updating our references uh, when we don't need to be doing that. Um, instead, what we should be doing is we only want to run our logic when a particular uh, menu is actually being used. Uh, so what I mean is when we move our main cursor, we should only be doing list logic uh, when we're on this main battle menu here versus when we're in the attack menu, we only want to run this logic. And so, to track that, we don't really have a way to do that currently. Um, instead, what we're going to do is we're gonna add a new variable to track our overall state of which menu we're in. Because uh, you can imagine, once we add in our functionality for handling items, switching between monsters, fleeing, uh, these will all have their own different uh, menu options and like what's available to the player. And we would need some type of state to keep track of where we're currently at. Uh, so to do that, we'll come into our battle menu options file and we're just gonna make a new const. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy this logic here. And what we'll do is we'll have a new object. So we're gonna have, we'll call this active battle menu. So this will be our overall uh, menu, like where we're at. And we'll just update our references. So we'll have active battle menu for our type. And then we'll update that reference here. And now we just need to provide our options. So we're gonna have battle main. Uh, so this is when the player first gets into the battle, they're on the main uh, selection here. 
we'll have battle move select. Uh, so this is when they're selecting an attack. We'll have battle item, battle switch, and then we'll have uh, flee. So then what we'll do is we're just going to update these and we'll actually do battle flee, keep that consistent. And we'll go ahead and save. Then what we need to do is we need to keep track of that state. So we'll need a new variable on our class. So what we'll do is come up to our properties here. And we're just going to add a new one. We'll do active battle menu. And we will reference for our type. We will do our active battle menu. And then what we'll do is in our constructor, we'll go ahead and set that value. So we'll go this active battle menu will be equal to our active battle menu and we will be on main when we first create our instance. So now what we need to do is as we go into our different menus, this is going to be updated. So what that means is when we show our main battle menu, this will be a good spot for us to do that update. So we'll do this active battle menu will be equal to our active battle menu will be on main. And then when we go ahead and show our attack menu, this is when we'll go ahead and update that as well. Uh, so now we'll be on battle move select. All right, so now that we know which menu we're in, what we can do is we can come down to our methods for updating our cursors, and we can just add an if statement to check if we're in the right menu. So what we'll do is we'll come down to our move, move, select, battle menu cursor method, and we're just going to do an if statement. So we'll do if this active battle menu does not equal active battle menu move select, then we're just going to go ahead and return early. Otherwise, we'll run our code. Then what we'll do is we're just going to copy this. We are going to go ahead and paste that in our other method as well. So we'll only run that logic. Then we're going to come up to our move main battle menu cursor and similar check, except we only want to run this when we're on battle main. Then what we'll do is we'll paste that in our other method. All right. So now if we go ahead and save, we're just going to do a quick test. If we move our arrow keys, we move our option around. And then likewise in our attack menu, we move our options around. All right, with that, that brings this video to an end. In our next video, we're gonna continue working on our battle menu, and we're just gonna add in some more menu options for when the player selects one of the other options, so such as switch, item, or flee. We'll just display some static text until we implement that feature. So as a reminder, there's a link in the description of this video to the complete source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please see some of the links on your screen now.